and I teach Islamic art. I teach geometric art and arabesque art. Arabesque art, also known as biomorphic patterns or Islami, is an art form that is unlike geometric art, it is very organic, has a lot of uh, flowy shapes, and it has abstracted floral and vegetal shapes. And I'm going to be teaching you how to draw some patterns today. So I'm going to start off with describing the three main elements of arabesque art. The three main elements of arabesque art are the spiral. The spiral is behind sort of every arabesque motif and it acts as sort of the background in patterns where other motifs sprout out from. The next element is symmetry and structure. Most arabesque patterns are symmetrical. And lastly, rhythm and balance. All arabesque patterns flow um, with this sort of rhythm and they're balanced and in the way that they are spread out. So let's start off with a few drawing exercises. What I have in front of me is graphing paper. And this is just gonna help me draw symmetrical motifs. If you do not have graphing paper, regular paper will work just fine. This is just so that we can measure out and make sure that our motifs are symmetrical. Uh, next, I have a ruler and some pencils. We are going to use a softer pencil. So one thing when drawing arabesque patterns, they're very curvy and spirally. You need to make sure that you have a nice area where you have a lot of space to move your hands. You don't want to be restricted because that will show in your drawing. You want to draw in a way that's comfortable and natural with your hand movement. So this part of your hand sort of acts like a pivotal point. You don't want to be drawing um, sort of away from that. You want to be using that as a natural way to draw circles and spirals. So I'm going to start off with a simple motif. It's called a Rumi motif. So the word Rumi comes from the word Rum in Turkish, which refers to Byzantium. So the Rumi motif, I like to break it down into two simple shapes. There is the C shape, and then there's the S shape. The C shape has one curve, whereas the S shape has two curves going in the opposite direction. Another way that you could look at it is two circles. Find a larger circle that creates that sort of yin and yang like this. So this is our S curve. So let's draw our Rumi motif. So the Rumi motif starts off with a C curve like this. And then you have that S curve that comes like this. That's a basic Rumi motif. You see how over here we have one circle and we have the other circle, just like that yin and yang. Let's draw that again. We have the C shape and we have the S shape. Kind of looks like a leaf or a paisley shape, a C shape, and an S shape. Now, from that same motif, we have the C shape and the S shape. We're gonna draw out the circle here. And from that, we're gonna draw, we're gonna draw another motif like that. Let's try that again. We have the C shape, shape. From there, we have another one spread out. Let's do that again. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Like that. Another Rumi motif. We're going to start off with a slight S shape. This is sort of a backwards S shape. And then I'm gonna do the C shape. Let's do that again. 
Now, similar to this one, we're going to draw it again. If it helps, you can draw the circle first. And then connect. And from here, it comes out and connects like this. This, is, this motif here is called the pivotal point motif. And this one here is called the bird's wing. Let's draw it again. A lot of these motifs just take a lot of practice. And as you continue to draw them, it's going to become a part of your motor memory. So a lot of it is just practice. You want to draw as much as you can. Don't focus. If you make a mistake, don't go back and start erasing it and trying to fix it up. Just do it over again. This is all just practice. This is so that we can warm up our hands and get used to this movement. The next motif is called the tapelic motif. So the tapelic motif for this one, you want them to be perfectly symmetrical. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to take a red pen and I'm just drawing down a dashed line and this is going to be our line of symmetry. So the first tapelic motif, we're going to start off by drawing a bit of a structure. We're going to draw three circles like this and one at the top. Try to make it nice and round and symmetrical. So I'm going to do that for all three of them. So this is going to be your structure here. Now, using this circle at the top, we're going to draw this sort of like pointed dome shape. We're going to try to make it symmetrical. And then, this part is easy. I'm just going to outline the circles and connect it. That's one of the tapelic shapes. The other one starts off the same way, has that pointed dome shape. It comes down this way on the circle. So you're drawing about one quarter of a circle. And you're going to bring it down here. We're going to draw a C shape like that. So one curve. I'm going to do that on the other side. I'm going to draw about a quarter of that circle. I'm going to connect it like this. And at the bottom, we're going to add a little circle like that. The last shape, again, same top part. It's going to come out like this, a quarter of the way, just as this one. And then you're going to connect it down with an S shape, like that. The next motif we're going to draw is the Kapali motif. Now Kapali in Turkish means closed. This motif acts as a structural motif when drawing patterns. So the Kapali motif is a bit more difficult. So for this one, we're going to draw a bit more of the structure beforehand. So I'm going to draw two lines of symmetry for this one. We have a vertical line of symmetry, and we're going to draw a horizontal line of symmetry as well. So just like the tapelic motifs, this one has that pointed dome shape. I'm actually going to draw in two more lines of symmetry, or let's call these structural lines, like that. And this is where it really helps to have graphing paper. If you don't have graphing paper, you can just sort of eyeball this a little bit. So you're going to draw a vertical line, a horizontal line, and then two diagonal lines. 
at the top part, you're going to draw the pointed dome shape and it's going to stop at the blue line. You're going to draw it again there. And you're going to do the same thing at the bottom. You're going to draw a pointed dome shape. Now you can count up one, two, three, four units. So one, two, three, four. Starting here, and I'm going to draw an upside down pointed dome shape. On these two sides, I'm going to sort of draw in, it's not quite a circle, it's more like an oval. That is a Kapali shape. Let's draw that one more time. So these are our two Kapali shapes. It can be difficult drawing symmetrical shapes like this, especially when the lines of symmetry are different, where this part isn't exactly the same as this part. So there's a few techniques that we can use to make our drawings perfectly symmetrical. So this was just our sort of warm-up exercises. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of tracing paper and we are going to fold this in half. If you don't have tracing paper, you can always use parchment paper. And parchment paper will do just about the same thing. It might be a little bit less translucent as tracing paper. We're going to fold this in half like this. And then we're going to fold it again and we're going to match the corners and try to keep it really neat. Get a nice sharp edge. You can use your nail to run it down the edges. Now, I folded my tracing paper two times, which means that we have four sections here. One, two, three, four. And what we're going to do is what I like to call the snowflake method. It's kind of like in the winter when you make snowflakes to decorate your house, where you fold the paper multiple times and you do a cutout on one side and then you open it up and it becomes beautif beautifully symmetrical all the way around. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep our tracing paper folded like this and we're going to draw our own arabesque pattern on one side. Of the tracing paper and this is going to be the center of our pattern make sure that you use you, the center is on this fold so that when you fold it out it's actually the center and not one of these edges so this is going to be the center of your pattern and you're going to draw a combination of the rumi the tepelic and the kapali motifs we're going to draw a combination of these three motifs on this piece of tracing paper keeping in mind that these are edges and this is the center. And then we are going to open it up and draw it on all four sides. And I'll show you how in just a minute. So I'm going to draw a motif and um, over here, I'm going to draw a half Kapali motif like this. We have our pointed dome, the oval shape, and the pointed dome at the bottom. I'm going to bring it to the center like that. I'm going to draw another Kapali shape. We have our pointed dome. We have the oval shape, but this time I'm going to join it here like that. And in the center, I'm going to draw a tepelic motif. I'm going to draw this one. On this side, I'm going to draw another tepelic motif. I'm drawing it this way because this is where the fold is. And let's draw the 
this one. Next, I'm going to add a spiral. So let's do it so that our spiral starts over here. And then touches the topelic motif. Goes through, touches the other one. Comes around. Like that. The end of our spiral, I'm going to add a roomy motif. And at the top over here, I'm going to add a tapelic motif. So this is a half tapelic motif. I'm only drawing half of it because I'm drawing it on the curved line. And I'm going to add a few little embellishments here, like that. So I have my pattern here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up this way and I'm going to draw on this side. So make sure that you are drawing on the same side of the tracing paper. You don't want to have half the drawing on this side and half the drawing on the back. So open it up. You have this fold here. And then you're going to trace it. Now, once you have it traced, if you open it up, look how perfectly symmetrical that is. So you have your Kapali shape over here, you have your Tepelic shape over here, you have your Rumi shape and some other embellishments. Over here you have your other two Tepelic motifs. And when we fold it this way, we can turn it around and draw the rest of the pattern. We're just going to trace it right on here. Once you're done tracing, you'll have something that looks like this. Perfectly symmetrical. Now, we made sure that all of our drawing is on one side. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this to watercolor paper. And the way that works is you take the side that you draw on and you put it against your watercolor paper you're going to tape it down and you're going to draw on it again and the pressure from your pencil is going to transfer the lead to the other side. I had already transferred my pattern to the paper earlier. Looks something like this. So once it's fully transferred you have something that is ready to paint. So I hope you get a chance to make your very own beautiful arabesque pattern. My name is Amina and I hope you have a great day.